What's up, guys? It's Lord Saint, and as promised, we're back with another week of Anthurium Talk. And last week, I promised you that I would show you the cocktail, is what I called it, of a mix of material, of potting material, that I kind of put together uh, and started using for my Anthurium. And I did tell you that they've all just really taken to it and they love it. It is important for me to just make a note that anybody that's viewing this for the first time, last week I put an Anthurium video out and I told everybody that I would show them my hybrid today and that we would talk about the medley of material that I put together. I do grow indoors for my Anthurium and I do grow my patio, which is outdoors. And I do have a few that are outdoors. So this mix just works for me. Again, I'm in South Florida. We'll see how it does this summer, but right now in the patio and indoors cabinets or just ambient conditions, this is what works for me. So I'm not gonna hold it. Let's, let's talk about this medley, right? Of just things that I use. Now it's important to note, like I told you guys, you're gonna do some research. You're gonna find folks, plant parents that use all types of mixes. A lot of plant parents will use perlite and soil. A lot of parents like myself are just rather soilless for their entire collection, regardless of what it is. My entire Aeroid collection has gone soilless, so I'm not using any dirt or soil. Okay, so what am I using in the mix? All right, the mix mainly consists of, uh, we'll start with the base. The base is pretty much a orchid mix bag from my local hardware store. If anybody knows where I can find coarse bark let me know i am looking for coarse bark i'm in south florida or if you order it online just drop a comment below let me know where you're ordering from outside of that i am just buying as needed i'm buying bags of orchid bark mix and those bags mainly cons consist of bark charcoal and they'll have perlite it's the main ingredients of these bags uh, and that's perfect because i don't know if it's just me but when i look at the roots of my orchids and I look at the roots of my anthuriums, I think there's just resemblance in how the roots really interact with the, with the, I won't say soil, but with the mix that they're in. They do like a lot of air. Every time that, or when I did have a mix that was a little just less chunky and, and just was more compact, I started rotting all my anthurium and it, it just, they, they weren't happy in it. But since I've gone to this, it's, they're, they're flourishing. It's like, it, it's, it's a breath of fresh air, literally. Um, so I start with the bark, I start with the perlite, I start with the charcoal. Those are the main ingredients that come in that bag. And then I started milling my moss. So I mill the moss and now I add milled moss into this mix, right? It's good for the water retention uh, and all that good stuff. And in addition, the main ingredient that I just love is cocoa chunks. Uh, if you're using cocoa, if you're not using cocoa chunks, start using cocoa chunks. I love cocoa chunks. It's the main ingredient of all. Whether I'm growing philodendron or anthurium, I use cocoa chunks in all of it. Those are pretty much the ingredients that I use. There's no generic soil involved in there. It's all, it's a soilless mix. As far as fertilizer, you can use Osmocote. I use Osmocote slow release, but I do, I do uh, supplement with more of fertilizer in addition to that. And you can use anything that you, you'd like. I mean, I've used everything from miracle Grow to more natural stuff and the, they, they just do well they don't mind it. So I use both Osmocote and then uh, I'll supplement with further in between. Down here in South Florida, you can imagine that outside in the heat, the Osmocote, it, it may say six months on the pack, but that may mean three to four months in reality, just due to the heat that we have here. Now the plants indoors, they do, obviously that stretches further because they're not subject to the heat that my other plants in the patio are or outdoors are, uh, but that's pretty much what I'm using in this. Now, if you wanna add anything else, I, I have, <laughs> I have vermiculite and I added to this because like I said, over time, I was just adding different concoctions based on what I had. I, I was adding different materials based on what I had readily available. And at one point I did have vermiculite and I did finish pouring out a bag of vermiculite in here. And it's just working. The perlite, the vermiculite, I know it's a balance here that, you know, like I said, I'm definitely overdoing it. I think I would be fine with just the milled moss, the orchid mix and the cocoa chunks. Quite honestly, they do just fine in that. I have had them in that. But if I started adding anything a little bit more compact, I just wasn't successful in it. Now, that's not to say you can't be. There are 
several ways to grow anthurium. Some people are very successful in just some type of dirt and perlite. For me, this is just what works. It's nice and chunky and what I like about it, I, I don't, if you're gonna ask me for ratios, I don't have any ratios, I'm just eyeballing it. And I pretty much know based off of the size of the plant that I'm going, if I'm, if I'm potting up smaller like seedlings and they're starting to size up, obviously I don't want huge bark inside of tiny little, you know, three or four ounce cups or anything like that. So obviously I'll move away from that and it'll be just more perlite milled moss and maybe some cocoa chunks and that'd, that'd be just fine. But as I start to get bigger, then I wanna introduce bigger pieces of bark into the mix. That way it's, I'm getting as much airflow as possible. So that's what I'm using. I don't, I, I don't know if anybody has found it hard to uh, get size three perlite. As of lately, I haven't been able to find bags of size three perlite. They used to be everywhere. I used to be able to get it on Amazon or go to the, nor uh, the local hydroponic shop and I can't find it. For some reason, I think there's some type of shortage, but size three perlite is also one that I really use for my larger uh, size anthurium when they start to size up. So that's the mix, the soilless mix. If you have any questions on that, drop it down below. If you need me to elaborate on it, make a different video or just show you how I'm making it. Just let me know, I will make a video doing those things. All the plant, the plants that I showed you last week, they're all in this mix right here. It's, there's no secrets here. They're all in this mix. And like I said, I am putting Osmocote for fertilizer and then I'm using a few other things uh, as they come. I'm not doing anything fancy. The rest of it is uh, just South Florida doing its thing. Any questions, let me know down in the comments. We'll talk more about this if necessary. All right, let's get right to the, uh, the hybrid I created and the one I'm excited about. I actually had more variegated seedlings that that came from this mix than I thought. So I'm gonna show you one or two, but the yield has been incredible. And I'll show you a non-variegated seedling that I have that I kind of just, it's been sizing up and the roots have gone crazy. I actually need to go out there and resize all uh, the seedlings because they're just, they're going nuts. They're loving it right now. And it's only gonna get worse because we're right here on Spring's doorstep, right? So I'll put this here. Let me, let me just grab these two plants. All right. So the hybrid that I'm so excited about, and I'll just tell you a little about this. You've definitely, if you've been on my channel, you've definitely seen this plant before. Now this was an Indonesian import and I imported it as a Pappy Dark. So it's some type of uh, Pap hybrid, uh, but it's a dark Pap in essence is what I got it at, as. And you can look at it right there and you can really see the features. I'll show you guys a close up of that, uh, but I love it. Um, it's very, I don't know if this is going to do it justice, but it's very dark and just, I, I love the shape of it. And then this mag was a gift from my aunt. She, she actually told me to take it. She didn't have room for it. So she's like, you got to take this and hold on to it for me. And it turned into, it's, it's loving your, your uh, grow area. So you just hold on to it and keep it as you make seedlings, just give me seedlings or, and whatever, I digress. Uh, but you can see the features of this, I just love it. Again, uh, this one is actually very dark and the veining is just so prominent in it. It's beautiful, I love it, right? So I got real excited when uh, I was successful in pollinating these two. And you can see the size of the seedlings here. I've got two seedlings here to show you guys. And this is one of the seedlings and I'll, actually a majority of them are this size already. So I've been growing them, just trying to see what the characteristics would be like, the color, um, it has a beautiful shimmer. It's almost like a bluish tone to some of them. And I'll show you there and here. And then I have, like I said, <laughs> it spit out maybe upwards of around 10 variegated uh, seedlings. And I, there may be more. I'm, I'm just plucking them out and repotting as I go because I am getting ready to do a giveaway where the plan is to do anywhere from five to 10, probably closer to five. And when I do do that giveaway, it will be on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, look out for that. If you don't, go check me out uh, at Lord Saint underscore. But I will be, I won't be doing any variated ones, but I will be doing 
uh, the regular ones. And if you could just look at the features of these, the parents, I mean, we do have sexy parents here. So I think this is just going to be, um, as they get larger, the it's going to show a lot of character and I'm, I'm just really excited for it. So this is the hybrid I was working on. This one actually has more of the chunky mix and this one's directly outside or less chunky mix and it's outside, but due to the heat that you know, in the grow, uh, the shade house that I have it in, the sunlight, I, I wanted it to be better at water retention. So I did add, I think cocoa peat is what I added just for a little bit more water retention. And I, I don't bother this one. I leave it alone. I ignore it. I am going to keep an eye on it this summer because last summer was just brutal for a lot of my anthurium. It couldn't grow anything outdoors. Everything was melting. Actually, you can see some of these leaves. It's got a new leaf coming here, but it got back leaves that, that just started melting last summer when we had just brutal heat in South Florida. So this has been newest leaf and this is the leaf to come. And this is what we have right now. I'm going to, again, do a giveaway on Instagram. I'll have these for sale. If not by the end of this month, uh, the beginning of next month. I tried to keep this one short for you guys, straight and to the point. If you have any questions, Drop a comment down below. Again, it's Lord Saint. If you like this video, if you liked last week's video, let me know. Subscribe to the channel, drop a like, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm gonna do another three Anthurium for my collection. I'm excited to show you guys, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Have a good night.